These 136 kilometers are roads, I may say, are in a good condition. For the rest, we plan to work on them next year. For the rest, we, we plan to work on them next year, as well as uh, the years to come, according to how long they are. The means we have all the support we get as the district. Muhanda munini mu muji uva ahanga ku bitaro ukagera ku kibuga cy'umupira Here we have roads that have been constructed for us like the main road that goes from the hospital up to the stadium and the airport We also have another road that goes from the Pentecostal church up to the border with Congo commonly known as Petite Barrière or Poilour To tell you the truth those two roads have been very useful they have also improved on the image of Giseni town Secondly, I would say that we still have problems related to roads. There are roads we plan to construct in partnership with the European Union, the CEPEGEL, as well as the Ministry of Infrastructure. We understand the agreements have been completed. We are now waiting for them to be signed. The agreements will be signed in the Ministry of Infrastructure, RTDA, so that the entrepreneur might start construction works. Seori Koko is the one who won the tender. Those roads are 5.2 km long. One part of it starts from the hospital up to the airport. The other starts from the district offices and connects with the Petit Barriel border post. Those two roads are the remaining roads that cause problems in our district of Hawari gari sanswe ni bus tamino ni parikingi. This bus park is not like any other bus park. It is a bus tamino. Cars that come from different parts of the country, like Kigali, park here and offload goods and passengers. Those that want to pick other passengers and goods do so without delaying on the premises. That means when a car gets here, it spends only 30 minutes and goes on to Musanze and Kigali. It is under EDPRS 1 that our road was tarmacked. Many roads have been constructed. We particularly look at the impact those roads had on our population when it comes to communication with other areas, transport of goods to and from the market, improvement of commercial exchanges, etc. Most importantly, this stomach to main road, as well as the secondary road, have attracted investors. What are the main challenges the ministry had to face in the transport sector during the implementation of EDPRS-1? I think generally uh, the projects have moved. But they did not move as fast as we can. The projects are taking longer than they should have done. The biggest challenge, obviously, is uh, there are quite a number of them. The first of all is getting the funding which is required. Even if you get the funding, you need to do a proper procurement process. And a lot of things get stuck in the procurement process. You need to do a proper negotiations when you get a procurement, when you get to identify an investor, uh, proper negotiation, the, the, ego, the, the capacities to negotiate and do the contract also becomes a bit of a, of a problem. And then after that, um, the issue of uh, contract management, to be able to make sure that the contracts are finished in time, the projects are finished in time, the contracts are finished in time. The issue of monitoring and evaluation becomes a bit of a problem too. In general, capacities. Capacities. There's the issue of funding, but also the issue of capacities to be able to handle the projects properly and to be able to finish the time. So this has been the biggest challenges. So, okay, things worked, but it could have been worked better. And that's what we are trying to improve in EDPRS too. Under EDPRS2, the transport sector has set specific goals. What are the big projects and main activities that will be worked on in coming days? A lot is planned for. I would start by public transport. There are many projects under public transport, but in general, we plan to have harmonized the public transport sector in the five years to come. 
muri rusange IDPRS ya 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 kabiri zaje kurangira generally by the end of EDPRS2 we should have reached 70% on feeder road improvement and 100% of good quality tarmac roads there will be a big increase of tarmac roads we will have many more kilometers we will continue to work on the ongoing projects that will not complete it in EDPRS1. Those include the completion of the multinational roads, particularly the completion of Kigarigatuna Road, as well as the road that goes along Lake Kivu from Rusizi to Rubavu, commonly known as Kivu Belt Road. We will also strive to improve on roads within different towns. But as planned for under EDPRS2, we will do our best to boost air transport. That will be done in two phases. We will first rehabilitate the airports we already have. We are now renovating the Kanombe International Airport. As we wait for the construction of Bujisala International Airport, expected to be much bigger than Kanombe Airport, renovation works that started under EDPRS-1 are still ongoing and should be completed next year. We are renovating it so that it continues to provide quality service. The water and sanitation sector is also very important for the development of the country. A lot has been done in line with achieving the Millennium Development Goals that aim at universal access to safe drinking water and basic sanitation. I did not have a toilet before. I used to go in a place where I had gathered grass, and when it rained, I would even go into the bush. I now have my own toilet, no more flies on my plates or saucepans. I am really grateful to you for helping me to have access to a decent toilet. Mm. This cell did not have water or electricity. It was a cell that was in darkness. We now have no problem of water and electricity. There were no latrines. The villagers used to go into the bush. There were so many diseases caused by poor hygiene. But as you can see, we now have well-kept toilets with facilities of washing hands. Now the population washes the floor of the houses as well as those of the toilets. As you could see, there is no hygiene problem whatsoever. Whoever goes to these toilets has no problem. That is an improvement in terms of hygiene and sanitation. When there is no toilet, there can't be hygiene. We now have up to 80% of the population living in grouped settlements in Midugudu. That enables us to take water installations close to them as they live together. We have a cleaning water station in Kyohoha in Nyarugenji sector that distributes water in the district. We now have up to 70% of the population having access to clean water. However, in partnership with the top leadership of the country, as well as the Ministry of Infrastructure and Iwasa, we are planning to construct another water cleaning station under EDPRS2. This one will be constructed on Akadjara River so that the water processed by the station might be added on what we already have to give the entire cell access to clean water. In general, the percentage of Rwandan citizens who had access to clean water up to July 2012 went up to 71%. percent Water has been distributed throughout the country. Rwandans now have access to clean water. That has improved first and foremost the health of the population, both in urban and rural areas. That has also enabled Rwandans not to go far from their residence to fetch water. But the benefits can also be seen in the improvement of using clean water and electricity for their own development.
Women and children have particularly enjoyed the clean water infrastructure. Before, children went to school after fetching water and that made them waste time they could otherwise use to revise their lessons. All these large roads, I mean the national roads, the tarmac ones, public toilet facilities have been constructed. There are toilets in schools, churches. What still needs to be done now is getting the whole population have access to toilets so that the hygiene and sanitation facilities might not only increase in number but also develop the culture of using them adequately. All that will have a positive impact on the lives of Rurindo citizens. The fact that these public toilets are here makes it easy for us. Before getting them, we used to go in the bush, and that was not clean at all. Before, people would go anywhere besides the tarmac roads like here, but nowadays they come to these toilets. I see that because I work on these public toilets. Infrastructures are the engine of the development and the economy Rwandans strive to reach in line with the Vision 2020. The Ministry of Infrastructure will therefore continue to do everything possible to increase and maintain infrastructure for the benefit of all Rwandans. <laughs>